And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we have to take care of the very first thing on the agenda, which is starvation. Uh, yeah, I didn't notice that. Someone pointed out in the comments. In fact, a few people pointed it out. I, I, I completely missed that one. Now, the thing that got me was it's actually starvation over here on this planet. The second one we colonized, the one with the teleporters on it. Turns out the temperature got a bit chilly, spread up from this icy biome and stifled a bunch of the crops, which eventually led to us running out of food here. So the first thing I've done is I've uh, emergency sent over a whole bunch of food. Basically our bristle blossoms, our bristle berries and our meal lice. Which is a good thing because Alex here is not doing too good. And by not doing too good I mean their calories were down to 631. Almost accidentally killed someone there. They're gonna... Yeah, they should live long enough to get to the seats. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they, they won't go below 500. Okay. That's first things taken care of, anyway. Next up, it's going to be straight into making an industrial brick. Oh, okay, that makes me feel a little better. They can store the rest of the food, and I'm going to make a few changes here and move all these crops up a bit. That might be an idea. There we go. We've moved everything up a bit. It's far enough away from the temperature to survive a little bit longer. Uh, what's the actual what's the survival rate on these things? 15 degrees. Yeah, we got another 5 degrees before that becomes a problem again and I forget about it. Alright, but back here. It's time for us to uh, make our industrial brick and I'm thinking here is the best place to do it. We stick our industrial area in here and we can turn it into a sauna later and that way we can boil all the salt water here inside our sauna and turn it into clean water. Uh, at the same time we can then add the volcano into the sauna at the end, and then we should have a volcano inside here that helps generate power. Well, that'll be much further in the distance. I always wanted to do an industrial sauna with a volcano in the middle of it, but not not today. We don't have enough time to do all of that. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just get the basics up and running. We are all set to take this place out. We just need to make a few changes. You see, the thing is, it's, it's 70 C in here. If we send any dupes in, they're going to get scalded, heat stroke, that type of thing. So what we want to do is send in two dupes first. In fact, we'd prefer to send more, but we only have enough reed fiber for three more Atmos suits. So I'm only going to build two and keep enough of the reed fiber so we can repair some of these suits as they are going to wear out. And that means we also need to make a few changes here. For example, our ranchers, they're the ones that are going to be going into, well, they're going to be going in here and using these Atmos suit docks. And there's a new skill that's out. And it's suit sustainability training. And this one slows exosuit durability damage. I don't know how well it works, but um, yes, yes, you're going to you're going to take that, and then we're also going to give you exosuit training for the exosuit penalty reduction. Normally, when you put on an exosuit, it gives you a little bit of a negative to your movement. For example, if we grab atmosuit copper, uh, you get a minus six athletics wearing the atmosuit. But if you get the exosuit training for suit wearing, you get rid of that penalty entirely. So just nice to have. But that means, yeah, all our ranchers got to take this. Uh, yeah, sorry, that's also you and Tugboat. Actually, you're so close, it doesn't even make a difference. Yeah, go go grab those two as well. Now, that we're also going to have to give this to our builders because our builders are the one who's going to be, well, going in here. So, yeah, that's going to put up to 15 morale. I don't like doing that, but I can we can live with it. Especially considering our food is so nice at this point and we have so much morale floating around. It's just I, I hesitate about this because I feel like at some point I'm going to have to go scrub back and scrub these again. Oh, mechatronics engineers. Yeah, they, they're definitely going to need that as well. Oh my god, that puts them to 16. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that's not probably good. But there we go. That's, that's done. Oh, suit wearing. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep an eye out more for suit wearing in future. That will save you about two morale. Well, three, four, five. It's going to cost you five. So technically you could reduce that to three. It'll save you two morale points. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it would be nice to get. Okay. Uh, that means we can now start digging in here. And we're going to drop all of this stuff all the way down. All that water's got to go. I've been thinking I was going to sweep this place out, but with only two duplicates, that would take an eternity. Instead, I'm thinking we throw in some auto sweepers, conveyor loaders, and just... Well, let it automatically sweep itself out. It should be faster that way. Now, we can't quite get all the way to the corner, but uh, you know what? Maybe we can. We can just, you know, put that one there. We'll just have to be slow about turning these all on. Uh, I don't want to turn them all on at once, or it could be problematic in terms of our power supply. Now, over here, we're going to let that salt water from there flow down into our tank. Namely, because this is a nice big tank, even if it is a tiny bit scaldy. 
God. Hey, guys, guys, just uh, get rid of that sand, would you? Otherwise, that sand's just gonna end up in the bottom of the pit. All right, we're close enough. We've almost got this sorted so that we can start on our industrial brick. Well, that gets it started. This auto sleeper is going to take all the stuff from over here, dump it into that conveyor loader, and then we're just going to send it over to there. Now, I know our uh, storage location is all the way over there, but I'm not running. I'm not running conveyor rails that long. We just... the amount of resources it would take. Hmm. Or maybe. I mean... I can always demolish it again afterwards. Though that is going to dump six, 60 degree stuff right into the... You know what? No. So that's 60 degree junk I'm dumping right into the middle of our base. I would rather not overheat things. We'll just leave it here. It's uh, right on top of an icy cold area or a relatively chill area, so this should be fine. Okay, uh, we're not going to turn on that one just... Yet. Actually, I think we can turn on that one now. I only want one on at a time because I don't want them interfering with each other, but this one... Yeah, as long as that's passing through it, this one can't activate. So once this is finished doing what it's doing, that one will kick in automatically. And I somehow forgot to power one of them. How did I manage to do that? Uh, done. And uh, once that's done, what we can do is we can start walling this area in here across this there. And that means the only the heat can't escape out of there and we should be able to keep our industrial brick up here cool for the time being. We'll be switching to a hot industrial brick later, but we don't have enough steel to be running a a hot industrial brick just at this moment. So for now, we're just going to seal things off. One last thing we have to do is we also have to analyze this geyser. I've never gotten around to it, and I'd like to know exactly how much water we're going to get out of this. I'm worried that currently this is our major power supply. We're feeding this in here so that we can, well, generate hydrogen. That hydrogen is what feeds our entire power grid. Uh, uh, I think it's going to be shortly we're going to have to phase onto something else. We, we've got access to coal now. It's just this is already set up and quite efficient, so... Eh, we'll, we'll supplement our power supply with coal for the time being. Now that that's analyzed, it's time to seal this area off. Well, just temporarily, anyway. We'll be back in there later, but for now we want to be able to allow our people in here without Atmos suits so that we can get some more construction done faster. It's 50 degrees in here, which is not great, but it's livable. They might get a little bit of heat stroke, but not too bad. We have disabled the Atmos suit dock. Now our duplicates can get in and out of here with no troubles. The stuff at the bottom can get swept up by the auto sweepers, and we are free to use this entire top part for our little industrial sauna. I'm thinking we're going to cover the top here in steam turbines. Actually, how much plastic do we have? We have 1,120 kilos. Hmm, we kind of need 800 kilos of that to make naphtha. I should have brought back some oil. No, 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 we can get more plastic. We've got a glossy directed egg that's actually at 90% incubation. Uh, it'll still take about five cycles, and we'll, we'll get some plastic soon enough. But we can at least get one metal refinement up and running. Uh, for the time being, we're just going to let them sweep this area out and get it cleaned up and good to go. Uh, what do we do about up here? Actually, you know what? We can wall in the top there as well. I'm thinking... Yeah, we can just put in some granite tiles across the top right there. Eh, uh, perfect. We just got to make sure they have a way of getting to that. That would probably be a smart plan. While we were waiting for our industrial brick to come online... Randy decided it was time to give us a gift. The gift of 500 kilos of plastic. Yes, um, I will accept that gift. Also, a skilled exosuit trading. That actually, hmm, not the worst. No, no, plastic is far more useful right now. That is, um, excellent. All right, down here we are getting ready to put in our first refinement section. Took a little bit of squeezing everything around the place, but we can stick in a metal refinery, oh, say right about there. Now, powering it and all that is going to be mm, annoying. You see, the thing is, we don't really have an awful lot of metal floating around the place. I mean, we have 40 tons of copper, I suppose, which is not that bad. But we don't have any refined metal. Actually, let's refine all that copper up, I suppose. We'll have the uh, the ability to do it now. So what we're going to do is get some radiant pipes, and let me think. There we go. We'll use this to run the, uh, the coolant up into the steam room area and circulate around. Now, there is a few changes I'm still going to have to make. Namely, I want to get rid of those insulated pipes there. Let's use some ceramic. We've got some ceramic floating around the place, and we need to rotate that steam turbine. Yeah, it's it's very weird to realize, but you can you can rotate steam turbines. It, it's so rare you even think to do it, but you can. All right, let's uh, queue up some ceramics while we're waiting as well. In fact, let's just throw a kiln in here. Yeah, right there should be fine. And get that to queue up a bunch of ceramics. Why not? While we wait to stockpile enough ceramic, we threw in a bit of a power line using that very, very nasty, heavy watt wire made out of copper ore. But we're also going to need to put in a cooling solution. 
that's where the aqua tuner comes in. No, there we are. Aqua tuner, steel. And we're gonna place it over in the corner here, give ourselves a little bit of room. Uh, Plumbing-wise, we are... Ooh, actually, we might hold out for a bit more ceramic for that one as well. You know what? Give me a minute while we, we churn out, say, a couple of tons of ceramic just to help us out with this. To bootstrap this whole thing, we are going to need a bunch of power. So I'm thinking a few coal generators down here will help out. We're going to have CO2 problems, but uh, I can live with the CO2 problems. We'll figure out some way of getting it out of there, or we'll put in gas pumps if we have to. This is going to be a little bit cramped until we can get around to producing enough steel to just turn the whole thing into, like, a sauna. And at the same time, yep, yeah, we can grab that down there. Come on. And that can plug into that whole section. Actually, no. Don't want to turn that on just yet. Not until we get an automation wire across there. Yeah, we don't want those turning on until we've got everything else sorted. We will put the automation wire all the way to that end and stick ourselves in a bit of a battery. I am going to make that battery out of steel. Just because. I have a strange feeling it's going to get warm in here. The coal generators we can always swap out later, but the batteries, yeah, they always get finicky. So, with that done... And how much... Ah, ceramic. 2,200 kilos of ceramic there. I think we can start doing the plumbing over here a bit better. So, you. I want you to go in there. And then that leaves us with three more pipe segments. One, two, three. Perfect. All the rest of it can be radiant... Well, we're going to get radiant pipes here and we're going to use copper. Now, copper can come all the way along there. Ooh, you know what? We will have that bridge over and leave the rest as copper. Yeah, that looks an awful lot better. Done. And that's what it's going to look like. The plumbing is going to go all the way along here, and then we're going to stick it into a liquid reservoir. Now, the reason for the liquid reservoir is just to even out the temperature. Ooh, actually, that reminds me I need to put in a temperature sensor down here. Mm. Damn it, where are we going to put it? Uh, you know what? I think we can put that temperature sensor right there. It should be fine. Mm. I've decided that maybe a tiny little bit of redesign is in order. We need to power this. So we have two choices on how we do that. One, we can just throw down a power transformer and then run that power transformer, or run a wire from that power transformer to the aqua tuner any way we want. It'll pass through walls. Or we can plug it directly into our main grid, as in using heavy watt wire. But to do that, we need some sort of vacuum seal between it and the outside world, otherwise the heat in here would get out. For example, if we were to put a... Well, this entire area in here is going to become steamed up. So if we were to put a, say, conductive plate like that, well, that would act as a transfer medium between here and here, allowing the heat to escape. So, I'm thinking what we do is deconstruct this. Give me one second. This section here is where we're going to bring the power through. It's actually fairly straightforward, if a little bit annoying. We're going to stick in a heavy watt joint plate right about there. And that allows us to bring in the power into this section of the section of the steam room. Now, we don't want that escaping, so we'll stick in... Where is it? Another heavy watt joint plate down here. And once that joint plate is in place, we'll stick an insulated igneous rock tile on top of it. And now this area here is sealed off. We can make it a vacuum. And then this can't transfer heat from there up to there. Now, there's always loads of questions about this, like, oh, well, it'll travel through the wire. No, there's no... This heat can't travel through wires in this unless they're surrounded by gas or liquid or something like that. So long as everything's in a vacuum, no heat can travel through it. So this should allow us to make a little sealed-in area. And the mini gas pump that's now going to be trapped in there for all eternity, we'll slowly but surely turn that entire place into a vacuum. It'll take a few minutes, but once it's done, that place can never actually cause us any problems. Then we just need to go back into utilities, grab ourselves that aqua tuner and plump it down here. Oh, actually we can reverse that now. It's just the reason we couldn't put it in that way is that it, uh, its power output would be sitting on top of that. Give me one second. So, yeah, that does look a little bit complicated, doesn't it? It might just be simpler to start it up and you can see how it works. But uh, the general gist is this. The uh, the coolant comes back this way, gets dumped into the aqua tuner, gets cooled down by 14 degrees, spit out here and goes all the way along cooling down our steam turbines. I've even got a few pipes put in place for where those future steam turbines are going to be. Uh, in fact, we should put those down like that. Yeah, that will allow the... Uh, oh, and we'll put one down there as well. We're just preemptively putting in all the stuff necessary for when we add in the extra turbines. We're, we're not going to put in the steam turbines now because, well, we can't afford them. We don't have enough plastic to put in all of these and run all the refiner, refinery coolant and all that stuff. But we'll let this uh, we'll let this finish off and we should be able to put through a few, uh, a few rounds of metal well before the end of this. We are ready to seal this in. I think we're good to go. Uh, this here should provide our cooling. This here is, uh, well... These are pre-set up for our next couple of metal refineries that we're going to chuck in there. This is only going to be able to support three, unfortunately. But we'll be able to stick on four steam turbines. That's what... God damn it. 
Every time. Just, just get out of there. Stop embarrassing yourself, tugboat. Just, just, just leave. Come on. Go, go grab a snack or something. There you go. What were you even doing there in the first place? I will never know. Oh, look. Zap wants to join in. No, no. Zap, over there, buddy. There you go. Perfect. Someone else just... Whoop. Why? Why? Just stay out of there. There's no reason for anyone to go in there. Zero. Yeah, big, big time. Okay, perfect. We'll, we'll seal this in, and then we're going to put in a layer of salt water, and then a whole bunch of clean water on top of that. We opened up a couple of areas to get the gases out of there. We want to make sure all of the gases are gone. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pour in some liquid, which is actually kind of handy. We've got a bunch of salt water down here, and we want to use the salt water first. So give us a liquid bridge, and done. Okay, so that'll start pouring salt water in here, and we're just going to use one of the liquid vents for one of our future steam turbines to drop it in. That should fill the entire bottom layer with salt water, except for maybe the ends. Yeah, we'll worry about that if it comes to it. Sometimes those things don't fill up and gases get trapped there. It's really annoying, but hopefully that doesn't happen this time. And are we rolling? Yes, we are. All right, perfect. We can deconstruct that. We don't need any more salt water. It's just going to leave more salt that's going to cause more problems. Yep, that carbon dioxide doesn't want to move, does it? God damn you, carbon dioxide. Why do you got to do this to me every time? All right. I don't want to have to delete that aqua tuner. How are we going to get that out of there? Hmm. I said we drop some salt water on it. Wait a minute. What the? Oh, I was just building an entire pipe segment to go over here and drop water right down on top of the CO2, but the CO2 decided to move out of the way. Well, that's... Fine then, in that case, we will start pumping in clean water. Yeah, we can just do that there, and we can connect that up to that section, and boom, that'll dump clean water down in there and start forcing out the second layer of gases. We're going to need a fair bit of this. We're going to want about 200 kilos of gas pressure in here when we're finished. If you go over a 1,000 and it cause problems, then the liquid vents would be able to push everything out, but we're going to need about, oh, say, 400 kilos of clean water across the top. That way, when everything vaporizes, it'll be about a 200 kilo pressure all the way through here of steam. That just makes it much easier for us to get rid of the heat we're going to be dumping in there. Oh, here it comes. And uh, the water has arrived. Come on. Come on, it's pushing it all at the end there. Uh, that, that carbon dioxide is being very resistant. It doesn't want to go. Come on. Come on. Oh, God damn it. It'll move eventually, or I will go in there and move the damn thing. <laughs> or, how about we just start dropping in some water from above? There we go. I wonder if that'll push it out of the way. No. No. Absolutely nothing. Ugh. God damn it. Alright, let me think for a second. I think if we, say, deconstruct that tile there, that should give somewhere for the CO2 to push up into. And it won't break our vacuum seal over that section. Come on. No. Seriously. Oh, there we go. Perfect. In that case, put you in there. So far, we're up to about 82 kilos over there, up to 100 over here. I mean, to put in about, well, we want 400 there across the top. Uh, we're, we've even put in a couple of bottle emptiers, and we're taking water out of down here, and I missed a gate activate. Ooh, direct it. Hmm. Why not? Print it. We shall wrangle that sucker up, and throw them into one of our ranches there. And uh, we've got a second ranch over here. Already got two in it. Nice! And uh, this over here, you know what? I think I do want the plastic. We've already got a couple of extra reed fiber. Give me another glossy Draco in there. Why not? Once that thing matures and... Oh. Yeah, this was mentioned in the comments. I didn't think they'd go through the water. You little... Fine, we're going to make sure you can't leave there. Otherwise, the moment they're in this oxygen, their scales won't grow as quickly. For example, if we go under scale growth, their scale growth is 33% a cycle, scale regrowth 33% a cycle. That's because they're tame. If they're wild, they don't grow, they don't, uh, their scales don't grow that quickly. And the reason their scales are even growing at all right now is because of the, they're in hydrogen. If they go into oxygen, their scales won't grow at all at all. So, done. I suppose we can de deconstruct that door then. Hmm. Okay. So, you live and you learn. Uh, that was actually mentioned in the comments. Alright. Uh, this can continue on. While we're waiting for all of this to catch up, we're going to go and get ourselves a coolant for it. You see, the coolant we've been using over here is polluted water. Uh, polluted water is fine and dandy and good and all that. It's actually very useful for us. But the problem we face over here is we want this to go above 125 degrees. We want it to go up to about, well, as high as 200. 
and water's not going to cut it. Water will boil long before then and damage our machines and our pipes and all sorts of stuff. We don't have access to oil. Well, we'd have to fly back to the planet. But what we do have access to is plastic, and we can melt plastic. We used this trick back on the old, oh, what was it? Yeah, the micro mini base thingy. So I'm thinking what we do is we dig in here and access some heat and melt ourselves some plastic. And we're going to want to make sure it's sealed in, though. Say right about there should be perfect. And maybe we should mop up that water while we're at it. Well, we're waiting for this to get excavated. Uh, we had to disconnect the clean water from being getting pumped in there. Reason being is uh, the water was just about to run out going into our power supply. So let's maybe top that sucker up a bit. And over here, how are we looking? 248,000. Yeah, we're close enough. 248 kilos. Uh, down here, anyone want to anyone dig this, guys? Anyone? Hello? Digging time. There we go. I, I assume Mellington was on some sort of, you know, smoko break or something like that. That's why it took so long. All right. Now, utilities wise, let's grab a temp shift plate, make that out of plastic, and stick it right there. Now, these things suck heat out of the area, all eight tiles around them. So, the thing is, there's a bunch of abyssalite there, and I'm not sure here if it's going to pull heat out of that abyssalite. If it does, great. If it doesn't pull out of the abyssalite, we'll have to get closer and get close to the obsidian. Uh, all right, let's see what happens. And um, temperature shift plate is down. Okay, it's at 45C. Yeah, no, it's not drawing any temperature out of there. We're going to need to get closer. Ooh, I don't like that. I'm thinking right here is good. Hmm. So we're going to have to go in a little bit deeper into the belly of the beast. Fine. Okay, we'll deconstruct that temp shift plate. All right, stage two. Well, we've got access now. Give me a temp shift plate, make that out of plastic, chuck it right there. That will put us well within range. Okay, you're good. Perfect. Let's just go over plastic itself. Uh, plastic, great material. Uh, melting point 159. Oh, yeah, that should melt really quickly around here. Yeah, I, I bet you it's pretty toasty. What is in there? Wow, how is it that... Brandon, get, get out of there, buddy. Jesus. I did not realize how hot that was. What the hell? Okay, it's 60C there. 348. Hmm. Hmm. Let's just get all the debris out of there. Oh, that's a problem. I don't want to have the plastic melt and turn into... I think we're going to pull out all the debris. I think what's happening is the abyss light here is sharing its temperature with the gas around it, which is why it's getting so hot. Uh, let's put in a steel liquid pump because we're going to need that. Uh, we're also going to need to put in the plumbing for it to get all the resources out of there. Uh, you can go up like that. We have reduced the priority of the temp shift plate for a bit. We don't want it causing any problems. So we're going to get everyone out of there for a minute. Hey, why is, why is Millington not in a bed? My, my God, you got absolutely hor like horrendously injured and you're not going straight to a bed? Get in there, buddy. Wait, was it Millington or who? Wait, who got injured the worst? Oh, wait, it was Brendan. Jesus, Bre okay, Brendan, you can get into bed. There we go. This place is also a hospital now. We put in an outhouse and a mess table. Uh, let's see what this does to the actual treatment levels. All right, after having received treatment, their health goes up by plus 75 a cycle. I'm pretty sure that was the same... Hmm. When even when they weren't in a hospital. Yeah, I suppose it was easy enough to make. I think you get seven plus 75 health a cycle when you're in a hospital and you get tended to. Uh, Brendan there, has have they got tended? No, injuries minor. Injuries minor? They're down to 38. Dear Lord. Okay. Uh, we're getting all the piping done. Off we should. The moment this turns into liquid, we're going to start pumping it out of there. Which reminds me, we're going to need to get some power down there as well. The liquid pump is almost done and all it's costing is a few hit points off sexy there. They can walk it off. They'll be fine. Yeah, what I'm worried about here is... Well, the abyssalite. This abyssalite is way too hot. I think we want to replace that. Uh, igneous rock? Yeah, igneous rock there, 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 there. And what's that? Yep. There as well. We'll get a few more scaldings, but what I'm worried about is the moment that turns into a liquid, it will quickly again flash to a gas, because abyssalite is like that. Um, Millington? Yeah, kind of do need to be in there. I'm surprised you're not scalding. Yep, you are. You are. It's it's like a hundred degrees in there. Oof. You want? We will deconstruct those buildings right there. It's a tiny bit toasty to run this area. So what we're gonna do is 
We're going to check in a quick ice temperature shift later around here so that duplicates can work here maybe without getting scalded so badly. Dear Lord. Yeah, I definitely should have went with the insulated tiles first. But I'm thinking we've got a perfect diagonal angle there. Assuming we can get the temperatures down just a little bit. Dear Lord. 180 something? Oh, I just realized something. Uh, yeah, is, is anyone going to come for that? Uh, yeah, Millington, c come here quick, because if that ice thing goes in, it will probably uh, cause problems. Oh, wow, Millington's actually injured. Sorry about this, buddy. Uh, sexy, no, no. Give him a second, let him finish. There we go. Now you can do whatever you want with that. They'll finish that off, and hopefully it should turn to water pretty much instantly and then drop down. Oh my god, even Chris is injured. Yeah, this has been an expensive way to get coolant. Uh, also, not very cool. Everyone's just getting burned. All right, but we're finally done. We're going to stick in a temperature shift plate made out of plastic right there. It should turn into naphtha. Uh, then we can pump it straight up here all the way over into our metal refinery. Chris, you... M I think we'll... Yeah, we'll have Chris go, uh, go grab a bed, buddy. Too many injured people. Yeah, sexy, sorry, it... How? You're standing right beside a temperature shift plate made out of ice. Oh, God. Okay, so someone else is gonna be... Mm. Sorry. Okay, I think we'll let you get one more hit after this. Is that enough? Yep, there you go. Get out of there. So someone else can take over for you. Jesus. All right. Mart Martinez, you, you gotta you gotta finish that, buddy. Come on. Come on. I all right. Temperature shift plate has already hit 91 degrees and 144. Just melt. Okay. Now you're 159. That's fine. Did we get any sour gas? That would be bad. Gases. You got carbon dioxide and oxygen. That's it. Beautiful. Now the reason we chose naphtha, absolutely excellent thermal properties in terms of it vaporizes at 538 degrees. That's fine. That's miles away. Uh, so we can use this for literally boiling water. Okay, all of that's getting pumped. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, ooh, white liquid. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, it's pure white. Hmm. I suppose it's an unusual liquid that you're unlikely to see. One, uh, there's one build people like to do is where they ranch glossy drecos, and then they get the plastic from the glossy drecos, melt it, and then if you m eat up the naphtha even more, it turns into sour gas. So they basically make a sour gas boiler out of glossy drecos, which, you know, pretty cool but our pump is done i think we'll yeah we'll deconstruct that we don't we i don't want to leave that around for now we might come back here to get a, a second batch of naphtha but for now i think we're good let's make sure we got 800 kilos in here 800 kilos of naphtha precisely and it takes 400 kilos to run a batch through there so that is perfect and blueprint wise wow two of them are caregivers i wonder why randy wants to push caregivers on us right now who knows who knows indeed. Uh, let's make sure everyone gets healed up. Jesus. Okay, over here though, there's one last thing I want to do because I've messed up. Uh, that is, there's ceramic in there. All right, I just want to sweep that out before we go. We're still going to end up with salt water dropping salt in there, but we can at least get the ceramic out. That's a waste of 400 kilos of ceramic. Before we start firing this up though, we are going to want to get our coolant loop sorted. For that, we're going to use polluted water. Uh, you can connect up there. Perfect, that should come up here and plug it into our liquid tank. The liquid will pass through the liquid tank, come down here and go towards the aqua tuner. And the aqua tuner is set up with this little liquid pipe thermo sensor. If the temperature of the polluted water is above 10 C, and then the aqua, tuner, the aqua tuner turns on and reduces its temperature by 14 degrees. Now it freezes at minus 20, we don't want to go near that. That's why we're staying above. You could theoretically go down to about minus six, though you'd be really pushing things. I'm, I'm quite okay with just keeping it at a, 10c or lower that means if we if the stuff is 10c it comes out at minus four in fact let's check this here you're coming in at 22 coming out at how did i mess this up oh god how did i do this yeah i turned this thing off we're gonna have to completely redo this i messed up i had to go back to my old uh, design just to figure out how i messed this up and it was because this white output is going into the green. That can't happen. The white's supposed to be going into the white. Ugh, just the dumbest things you do. Okay, let me uh, take this apart and put it back together again. 
we are almost ready to start this stuff again. We just got to mop out the uh, the polluted water that broke out of the pipes. There was a weird rooting loop that caused some of them to go back through multiple times without getting scanned, so we can fix that pretty quick, dump it in there, seal this all back up, and then we can do our first batch of steel from through this. So, uh, accidentally mopped up the salt water there. Yep, yeah, accidentally mopped up the salt water. So, now we've got a bunch of gases in there. Yep, yep. Yep. I, no, I am not taking out all the water and putting back in the salt. That's just too much effort. Instead, that should form... Yeah, there we go. We got a little bit of a liquid lock. All right. Then we'll just put in a gas pump and do it the old-fashioned way. Why not? Christ, this is the dumbest. <sighs> okay. And uh, you know what? I'm going to be really super duper lazy about this and just put in some conductive wire right there. Uh, yep, in fact, we're going to overwrite that. We're going to, like, mess with the power requirements, but who cares? Who cares? We can fix it in a minute. All we got to do is get the gas out of here. It'll take two seconds. Well, the big pump is flooded, but that's fine. We can just put in a mini pump. Takes two seconds. There we go. At least it started, but it's definitely eating into our time. Oh, my God. Wait, what's our culling achievements? Is this the old one? Oh, slick enter an oil biome for the first time. Yeah, we knocked that out yesterday. It's just uh, I forgot to go back through that again once this save crashed and we had to re revert. Um, at the same time, we have taken all the clay, stuck it in that storage bin, and we're turning it all into ceramics slowly but surely. We've got 13 tons of ceramic already. Okay, I think we're finally done. We've stripped out everything. Yep, we can seal this back up again. Oh. Okay, then once that's closed up, we can turn the aqua tuner on, make sure it's set to the right temperatures. Uh, the water will be... Uh, we'll have to wait till the water heats up a bit, but it'll be fine. I think we've got plenty of time. Here comes the water now, coming out of 10C. Now, the reason we stick this liquid tank on the end is to even the flow out. It just means that when that water comes back around, it'll always be about the same stable temperature. Now, I know it has to travel through all these tiles before it gets there, but the average heat loss will be about the same. So, for example, this is 22.2... And by the time it gets to here, it'll probably be 22.3 or 4. They'll all end up evening out about the same. So this just helps us get a nice even flow. And then if we do expand the loop, we can just dump some more water into this tank to help out. How much extra? Yeah, we got about 487 kilos of... That's 48 tiles of extra water for pipes to run around the place. So that works out quite nicely. All right, let's fire her up. Iron to steel? Yeah, give, give me a batch of that. Oh. When it comes to iron to steel, you can actually hover over this. That's going to raise the temperature of this by 106.8 degrees. So the coolant, which is NAPTA in this case, is going to get raised up to 240 degrees, roughly. But that's fine, because when it goes through here, it'll dump off most of its heat. Uh, one thing about NAPTA, though, terrible thermal conductivity. It's absolutely horrendous. But since it's going through radiant pipes, don't have to care. Radiant pipes will take care of that thermal conductivity problem. And here goes their first batch. Let's see how she goes. Oh, well, that reminds me, we're going to have to put down a bunch of uh, storage bins and things like that, too. Seriously, is that already done? Hey, coming out at 238. It's the water up here, dumps a bunch of heat. Ooh, coming back around. How much have we got left? Coming back at 104. So went out at 238, coming back at 120, 130, 140. Ooh, about 140. Once that water in there evaporates, though, this whole place will become just a big steam room. God, I'm almost sad I didn't mop that up. We're going to have a little blob of salt in the corner. Oh, that just feels so much better. Now we can just run this as much as we want. Which reminds me, we should maybe make a few minor modifications here as well. And that, that's industry started at least. Uh, we'll have to make a few changes around here if we want to add in a few more of these. That's got to, ooh. Yeah, you are just in such an awkward position. You know what? We will put that as our entranceway in here to refuel the coal generators. We don't even have space to put in an auto, auto sweeper in. Uh, we'll sort that out later. We're going to end up moving down as we go along, and we'll end up evaporating all of this to turn it into steam. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Actually, how are we looking on the steam front of here? 70 degrees? Yeah, it'll be a while longer, but this place will get uh, a little bit cooler. And as well as that, we've redone the piping here so that the, a bit of chill gets dumped down in here to make sure this place doesn't overheat. We'll probably end up extending those, that piping a bit more as well. How are we looking on there? Uh, food poisoning, the germs are not liking it. Change rate minus 2,000, current temperature. Okay, so the temperature is slowly going to kill off the germs that are in there. Though, considering the amount of germs we're about to add in, nah, probably won't make that big of a difference. I think that's a good point to call it a day. We have managed to get, well, metal refinement will never stop now. We have more than enough coal to keep this powered for as long as we need to. And we also have, let's see, iron, lime, iron ore, oh, refined carbon. How are we looking here on the steel front? 
Yeah, we're we're going to have plenty of steel at the end of this, and then we'll start refining copper. I'm thinking 20 tons of refined copper would go a long way to solving some of our problems. And setting up a second refinery shouldn't even be that hard. We've already got this set up down here, and the temperatures have actually gotten an awful lot nicer. Yeah, we can throw down a second blob of plastic, and we can use that over there. In fact, we've already got two glossy directos over here, and they've produced... How much plastic? Where's the plastic? Yeah, 400 kilos of plastic already, just from those first two. And that's going to start expanding. I mean, you got to imagine... These eight critters have only been here for a while, and these five, there's five in that one already? Dear Lord. Actually, we might want to deconstruct that and put in another plant. Uh, the reason being, those plants, I think you need about one for each Dreco. I found one in here that was starving at one point, which was kind of annoying. But, uh, uh, look, see that one? Good to starve death in 8.2 cycles. It, come on, just, you know, fight for a plant. Survive of the fittest, buddy. Uh, we could expand it out, but... That's just annoying. We'd have to keep set, uh, add in an extra auto sweeper. I suppose we could. It's not that big of a deal. It's just I was kind of lazy at the time. We could also cut down the population to six, but, mm, you know, I'll worry about that another day. For now, we've got our metal refinement sorted. Next up, space science.